There is power in the blood of Jesus. There is power in the blood of Jesus. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, this morning, Jesus Lord, the Holy Spirit put a special message on me. And I want to say that it's called Hope Evidence. If you open the dictionary, all the world dictionary, the hope is a state of mind, it's an optimistic state of mind that is based on expectation. To me, this sounds very weak, very shallow, not worthy to hope something like that. But this morning, we're not going to spend time on the dictionary definition. We will spend time on the Bible definition of hope. The hope evidence, the Christianity hope is based on the strongest evidence that can ever be. There is no stronger evidence than the Bible, than Christ alone. God, the Father, the Holy Spirit, and the Word that is the power of God. Amen, amen, amen. You see, I will start with an introduction. What's the will of God? When Jesus came to do the will of God in Hebrew, he said, then I, Jesus said, here I am, I have come. Hebrew chapter 10, verse 7. It is written of me in the scroll of the book. To do your will, O God. Sometimes we think that the will of God is just a theory, is just a definition, is just few words, and it doesn't matter. Uh, whatever is going to be is going to pass, and everything is the same. Not with Jesus, not with the will of God. You see, when Jesus said, I'm ready to do the will of God, O Lord, he said, God, you prepare a body for me. A body to be crushed, a, a body to be bruised, a body to be put on the cross, to be nailed on the cross. A body to suffer, a body to die, all of that to fulfill the word of God, the will of God. You see, if I would be Jesus, I would say, Lord, I don't need to be come in the Nazareth, in the Bethlehem as a child. Why waste 30 years of time? Come when I'm 30 years at the Jordan River, get God baptized, get the power, get the mission, get the healing, preach the gospel, and finish the mission and go home. Not like that. The will of God was to be born as a child, to stay silent 30 years, 90% of his life, and work only 3.5 years. You see? For us, for people with business, we think this is, worth of, uh, this is waste of life. This is, doesn't make sense. Why Jesus have to live 33 years and a half and to work only 3 years and a half? That was the will of God. At 12 years old, when he came in the temple, the parents lost him in the temple. That's a good loss. <laughs> and uh, in the temple, uh, when after he, uh, they found him after three days, they said, child, son, why you uh, didn't follow us? Why you didn't come back home from the temple? You know what he said? I was 
here to do my father's business, to do my father's work. A lot of people, 15, 16, 17, 20, 20 some, they will say, oh, my job, my life is to enjoy, to do all things, not church. I want to say this is the important business of your life. Everything else can be skipped. This cannot be skipped. Everything else is temporary. This is eternal. And look at that. Because Jesus did the will of God. In Acts chapter 2, verse 22 to 24, let's get to the meat of this hope. Peter said this, Men of Israel, listen to these words. Jesus the Nazarene, a man clearly attested to you by God with powerful deeds, wonders, and miraculous signs that God performed among you through him. Just as you yourself know this man who was handed over by the predetermined plan and for knowledge of God, you executed by nailing him on the cross at the hands of Gentiles. But God raised him up having released him from the pains of death because it was not possible for him to be held in that power. Can you imagine? Jesus cannot be held by the graveyard, by the stone, by earth, by that power. He is above that. He is above everything. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen, amen, amen. You see, he did the will of God. But God the Father, God the Creator, did not stay silent. Did not stay distant. Even though on the cross, Jesus exclaimed these words very sorrowful words. Lord, Lord, why you forsaken me? Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. He, f he felt for a, a minute that he is forsaken. God did not forsake him. But God had to be to let the process go through and to suffer and to shed his blood because a price has to be paid for your sins, for your sins, and for my sins. Yes, not for his, for us. If Jesus would be rescued from the cross, we would not be saved. You see, through pain and suffering, through stripes of his wounds, we are healed today. We are saved today. And our debt is paid. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let's see. Birth brings hope. Death destroys hope. But the resurrection brings solid and permanent eternal hope you see birth death and resurrection it's above all because bring that solid evidence that solid proof that Lord and Jesus and the gospel it's above everything it's above death it's above graveyard because there is power in the resurrection hallelujah hallelujah you see uh, 1 Corinthians 13 verse 13 said and now these three remains you see after everything ends after everything finish there is three things that never finish never ends 
and uh, the apostle Paul said faith hope and love you see the fuel can be finished the food can get scared right everything else the inflation can go up and down the stocks can go up and down left and right but three things will never fail and the middle one is hope is hope maybe today your hope is shaking your hope is fading your hope is probably not not on solid ground let's go and see why we hope for why our hope is cemented it's in, in the strong foundation what's the anchor of it what's the power of it look at that um, on the on the second uh, thing the first evidence is hope is in his word you see we have hope in his word when we say his word you uh, word doesn't mean lecture here word doesn't mean just a uh, few things written on the paper word is more than that you see on the john first uh, 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 first chapter uh, verse 1 it says uh, in the beginning was the word nothing else in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and God and the word was fully God so at the beginning was the word nothing else no heaven no earth no galaxy nothing only the word and we call this the logos of god now let's go back in genesis every time when the creation took place was then god said and things happen then god said and things happen every single thing without god said didn't happen anything you see the power of the the word then god said and things happened oh this powerful word is still working today it's not a, a few things written on a book in the Washington DC or in Bucharest or in uh, Moscow no these uh, words are written in the book of life are written in heaven are written on earth and it's a living word of God is the power of God hallelujah you see our hope is in his word Look at that, what um, Romans uh, 15, 4. For everything that was written in the former times was written for your instruction. You see how the evidence is laid down? These words were not written just to have uh, 1,200 pages in our Bible. was written for a purpose. And the purpose was for our instructions to give us evidence so that through endurance and through encouragement of the scripture you may have hope amen, amen. the scripture give us hope not a, a law that is made in the in the congress not the, uh, the rules that is made in the companies not the rules that is made in olympia they don't have grounds but the scripture has grounds it's powerful hallelujah hallelujah oh the lord uh, is powerful and his word it will never die will never fade hallelujah and look at that we were talking and uh, 
brother before said about touch about pain and suffering look at that what job said job i would say job is the king of suffering he is uh, an ancient person in the bible and he suffered a lot and always when we refer suffering we refer to job and look at that what job said in uh, chapter 13 verse 15 even if he slays me i will hope in him can we say that it's not easy to say that even if he slays me i will still hope in him hallelujah hallelujah you see he was suffering a lot he didn't understand the suffering he was not at fault for that suffering but he said at the end of suffering until now my ear was hearing about God now my eye saw him and my redeemer is alive amen amen you see how big of the way of the road if i can say that from ear to eye it's probably a couple inches right but it's not as easy we can hear a lot of things and we can be shallow but when we see things we are more convinced we are more concrete on things that we perceive hallelujah oh job uh, after all his suffering he said even he that means god slays me i will still hope in him because i know who is god like jesus on the cross even though he said lord lord you forsake me he still was the son of god he still was the king of kings he still was the lord of lord and he brought the hope home hallelujah he he finished the mission well done job hallelujah now to bring this little bit more to you let's uh, most of you uh, were in the airport uh, let uh, let's show hands who was ever in the airport everybody right i don't think it was uh, uh, somebody that was never in the airport probably the small children right so most of you are very familiar with the airport right let's say there is only two gates in the airport in that airport that i'm illustrating here gate one and gate two right and I will make an announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, gate one is an airplane that is tested, certified, has the best pilots trained, and flew before thousands of hours and thousands of flights. And there is gate two. There is another airplane, airplane two, was put together like a puzzle by inexperienced technicians the parts were never tested the airplane never flew never complete the mission of the certification and the pilot sitting on the flight deck they never flew before they were not trained and they still trying to decipher what's the all the buttons around them and now i'm going to put a question to you you're going to fly with airplane one or with airplane two and i may add uh, getting the airplane two there is nice lighting colorful it's um, it's changing colors and it's a nice music is that sufficient for you to go with airplane two? Show hands. Who will go with airplane two? See? 
You see, that's the Bible that we preach. We don't have the hope in lighting, in music, in things that sounds good for the ear, sometimes looks good for the eye. No, 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 no. Our hope, it's in something solid. It is, it's something that is eternal, that is not changing. And this is our God. Hallelujah. You see the difference in the, any hope or the hope in our God or the hope in our Lord, in our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope from now on, you never choose airplane two. <laughs> Second evidence. Hope in the Lord God, in Jesus Christ, as his son. Psalm 146, 5. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for the Lord exhibit loyal love and is more than willing to deliver. You see why we hope in God? Because he exhibits loyal love. How many of you been around people that did not express loyal love? That's why it's a lot of suffering in the communities today. But that's not the same with God. God always express loyal love. And he's more than willing to deliver you. To deliver you, to deliver us. Because he is powerful and he's more than willing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, Psalm 130, verse 7. How blessed is the one whose helper is God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord, his God. What is your hope? What's your pillar? What's your strongest point? For you, for us, let's say, Lord, our hope is in you. Amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, this is wonderful. Look at that uh, 1 Timothy verse one, uh, chapter 1, verse 1. From Paul, who is, written, uh, who is writing the, 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 the epistle, he says, of Christ Jesus, by the command of God, our Savior, and Christ Jesus, our hope. You see, from uh, the beginning, for the apostles, Jesus was their hope. That's why when Paul was ready to be uh, uh, decapitated, when Paul was ready to finish his race, he said, I know what I believe in. I'm not afraid to do the next step. Because Lord was always with me. Even other people departed me. Even other people left me alone. Lord never left me alone. And I will assure you today, maybe people from the family will leave you alone. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe people from your team at work will leave you alone. Maybe other friends will leave you alone. There is one that will never leave you alone, and that's our Redeemer, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hope, this hope, Christianity hope, hope in God, never disappoint. Bring peace and joy. You see, I don't want to say show hands, but I think most of us, if not all of us, in one time in life, or many times in life, in one situation or other circumstances, we got disappointed by people, right? 
We got disappointed by very close people. Maybe your boss, maybe your neighbor, maybe this and that, right? But look at that. This hope does not disappoint. Roman 5.5. 5. And hope does not disappoint. Because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. You see, our hope do not disappoint. Why? Because always when our love for God fades or gets shallow or gets tiny, the Holy Spirit has a job to fulfill us with this love, with this passion, with this conviction. Oh, Lord, this morning, please pour your Holy Spirit in every one of us. If we don't have that much love for prayer, if we don't have that much love for singing, for praising him, or whatever other uh, uh, love that is fading away, Lord, this morning, I pray to you, fulfill our hearts with your Holy Spirit with double measure to be full of love, full of power, full of passion, full of trust. In the Lord our Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Now, even better. Romans 15, 13. Now may the God of hope. You see? The name of God is the God of hope. Only one is the God of hope. The God of Israel. The God of Israel. Abraham, the God of Isaac, of Jacob. And I want to complete the list to, uh, this morning. And I want this God of hope to be your God, to be your God, to be your God. Put the God of Peter, God of Cornelio, God of Yosef, God of uh, John or Mary or whatever name is yours. You see, you don't need to leave that list on three. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You need to put your name. It's not enough to be the parents, the, the God of your parents, the God of your grandparents, the God of your brothers and sisters, the God of passion for Christ church. No, has to be your God. Has to be your God and your God and my God. Amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah. The God of hope is my God, my Savior. Amen, amen. You see, uh, more than that, in uh, Romans 12, 12 says, Rejoice in hope. Endure in suffering. Persist in prayers. Rejoice in hope. How many people, how many times lost their hope? You see, our hope is not upside down. It's not cyclical. Our hope is crescendo. It's going more and more and more. You see, the Bible instructs us to see rejoice in hope. Not mourn in hope. Rejoice in hope. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, this is wonderful. Uh, uh, and another thing that gives us the, 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 the strength and the strongest evidence of our hope. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, hallelujah. How many times you call somebody higher in power? And you got to the other end of the phone. Sorry, my friend. Sorry, my brother. Sorry, my sister. I'm not the general director anymore. I got maybe fired yesterday. Or I don't have that connection. Or I don't have that power. Or I cannot help you. I want to tell you this. When you call God... You're never going to get that answer. God is not up for re-election. 
God is not up for another term of the, le- of the law. God is not up because his, uh, his uh, term is finished. No, God is forever. And he is the same. He doesn't change. Whatever he promised, he will keep his promise. Amen? Amen. How many times even the banks, even the corporation, big corporation, do not keep their word, their promise. Say, sorry, things change, we cannot do it, da, 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 right? All that things, right? In the Bible, is never going to be the same. Whatever is promise is going to happen. Because it's promised by the uh, uh, word of God, by the strongest person on this universe, is the creator of all things. Hallelujah. He doesn't, uh, uh, you know, betray his promises. He doesn't let the promises to fade down. He is a watcher. He's watching that his word is fulfilling every single day in every single soul. Hallelujah. He is the same. You see, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 13, he delivered us from so great a risk of death. How many of you was delivered from the risk of death? I was a few times. And I said, Lord, if you wouldn't be there, I wouldn't be alive today. My soul, my life was so precious in your eyes. And I think all of your life, all of your souls are so precious in his eyes. Maybe you are not valued so much in your school, in your university, in your teams, in your corporation. But I'm going to tell you something. You are very precious in the eyes that was on the cross and said, Father, forgive them. Forgive them all. I am dying for them with joy because they going to be my brothers and sisters. And I want to uh, enjoy the kingdom. I want to enjoy the eternal life, the eternity with them as my Bride, Hallelujah. You see how high level we are in the eyes of Jesus? Not his servant, not his neighbor, no. His bride forever and ever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, um, another um, word that the uh, second part of the verse says, we have set our hope on him that he will deliver us again and again. Do you believe that? If he deliver once, he, can he deliver second time, third time, whatever needs? You see how many people says, hey man, I helped you yesterday. I cannot help you today. Oh, once is too many already. Jesus is not going to say he is going to deliver us again and again and again. That's only Jesus. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians uh, chapter 3 verse 12. Therefore, since we have such a hope, we behave with great boldness. Why sometimes we are so shy? We are so scared. Why? Our hope is fading or we're going to say, Lord, we want to increase our hope in you because your word is never moved, is never changing. You are the same and you are ready to deliver us again and again. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What he promised, he's going to fulfill his promises. Hallelujah. Titus one and two in hope of eternal life which God does not lie promised before the ages began you see why we have that strong evidence that whatever he promised is going to deliver because God 
never lie and he uh, never will lie in the future. Hallelujah. Is that our God? Amen. Amen. People may lie. Governments may lie. Corporations may lie. But one uh, and only one can ne uh, never lie, cannot lie, and will never lie. That's our God. That's our Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now, the last and the strongest. You see, Brother Joseph mentioned here three families that are mourning and are suffering from their loss. That's a tragedy. That's, you know, our hearts sank, our feet bent. It's, it's very difficult to, to, to deal with a loss, especially with the loss of a son. Especially with the loss father, grandfather, uh, you know, husband, uh, father-in-law, and so on and so on. Right? It's so difficult. We cannot comprehend that. We are uh, uh, destroyed. We are shattered by that news, right? And look at that, what's the issue here with the hope. And it's a good issue, if you will. Our hope is the anchor to eternity. You see, even the ocean and the sea are very troubled, and the high seas are at work. And if you have a strong anchor, what are you going to put the anchor? Down on the solid ground, not on the waves that is changing and moving, right? On the solid ground. So we, uh, our hope, uh, act like an like a anchor. And this anchor is for eternity. Hope in the resurrection. You see, we, if we're going to go asleep or if we're going to go in the graveyard and Jesus is not going to come on our time, we hope in the resurrection. Amen? Hallelujah. We hope in the resurrection of our body as well by the same spirit that resurrect Jesus from dead. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Look at that, what uh, Hebrew uh, uh, chapter 6, verse 19 said. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, sure and steadfast, which reaches inside behind the curtain. You know what curtain is there? Or the veil is the veil or curtain of the temple. You know what was that divider? between the holy ground and the holy of holiness. You see, no, nobody could get there except the high priest once a year. But through our hope, we have an anchor that goes in the holy of holiness, that goes to the throne of the Lord, of God. was a beautiful song this morning by the worship team. Let me go to the throne Room, Hallelujah. Our hope is an anchor that goes to the throne room. Oh, hallelujah. Nobody can get there, but our hope can get hallelujah. And more. Uh, 1 Peter uh, uh, chapter 1 verse 3 says, Blessed the, uh, be the God our Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy he gave us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. You see? Our hope is a living through this resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, this is so wonderful. You see, this living hope is not a hope that is uh, one uh, degree today, two degree tomorrow, another one, another two. No, no, no. Our uh, hope is a living hope. It's, a, it's something that happened, something that tells us this, the, the word of God is true. Because Jesus, when he resurrected, when he raised up from dead, he talked to the disciple and 
said, don't you think all the gospel, all the Old Testament, all the prophets was speaking about me? So the resurrection of Jesus Christ prove once again the Bible is true. The word of God is authentic and it's going to happen again. Hallelujah. And you see, the last one, which is coming back home to you and to me, Romans 8, 11. Romans 8, 11. And I want to leave that on the screen for a second. You see, it says, um, moreover, so another testimony, another anchor, another pillar, another evidence for our hope. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from dead lives in you, hallelujah, the one who raised Christ from the dead will also raise your mortal bodies alive through his spirit who lives in you, hallelujah. You see, when we pray for the Holy Spirit, we don't pray just for a new experience. We just don't pray for because we want to see how is it. No, because this Spirit of the Lord, this Holy Spirit, if lives in you, when the, uh, uh, when the trumpet of the Lord will sound, oh, the big people, maybe kings, maybe presidents will not hear that trumpet. But you and you and you and all the people that serve the Lord will hear the trumpet and will raise from the dead and will be with God forever. Hallelujah. Is this worthy the hope? Yes, is worthy to have this hope. Not in people from uh, around us, not in books from the library, but in one book, the book of life, the word of God. And our King of kings, our Lord of lords, our creator, hallelujah. May God bless you. Amen. Amen.